Veritasium is right. Sorry for being this late to make this video. There's been a lot of controversy in this video, but my view is that Veritasium is right. So basically, you remember that this video Veritasium made four months ago about electricity. Yep, this video, if you didn't watch it, go watch it, link in the description, then come back. But I've watched several refutes on YouTube, and the contradictory mainly comes in two parts. First, the non full energy receiving problem, which just says the fact that bulb turns on without receiving the full energy, is absurd. The light turns on at any current, so it's always on. <laughs> and second, the causality problem, which just says the fact that bulb turns on right after one of the C seconds, breaks Einstein's special relativity laws. So, why does this original setup violate causality and common sense? Which is not true. In this video, I'm going to prove to you why are they wrong. But first, I want to say that I am not an expert in this field of area, but I am pretty confident about my understanding of electricity. So first, I want us to kind of rebuild a model for this problem in just 60 seconds. At t equals zero, the switch is closed. The electrons begin to move in the wire, forming a current. That current forms a magnetic field, which begins to travel the one meter gap. At t equals one over c second, the electrons in the top wire are affected by this B field. That they start flowing in the opposite direction. This is called the mirror field, and this current causes the light bulb to turn at roughly one over c seconds. Keep in mind that the point I've shown in the animation is not the only part of the wire that generates the B field. Any part with flowing electrons will generate a B field. But since the field strength decreases with distances, the bulb won't receive full power, but it would have turned on. And at this point, this model suggests that Veritasium is correct, but let's not stop here. As time passes, the electron continue to begin to flow, which my word, continue to begin to flow. And this action simultaneously make the top wire's electron flow. And at t equals half a second, two streams of electron flow meet. And since the bottom wire has more strength than the top, it begins to override the top wire. And at t equals one, two flows completely merge together, so the light bulb receives full power. And wow, that was so hard to say. But now, we saw that at t equals 1 over c second, the light bulb has already turned on, although not to its full brightness, but it's on. So Veritasium is right. Now, you might say that this model is not correct, but check out the people who disagreed with Veritasium. They even agreed with the model. Close the switch, suddenly a burst of positivity travels in the wire at the speed of light. So, keep in mind of this model, because now we're going to check some of the controversy points of the argument. The current inside the wires creates a magnetic field outside the wires. If flow of electrons creates magnetic fields, then why do we say? Inside the wires, electrons just oscillate back and forth, but they do not carry the energy. Um, so there's a misconception that when we talk about current, we just think about electrons flying by, but that is not true. Electrons have extremely slow drift velocity. It is the oscillation wave of electrons that travels at the speed of light, which creates a magnetic field. Yes, fields carry the energy, but the current inside the wires creates a magnetic field outside the wires. So to conclude that, but what we've learned in this video is it's not really what's happening in the wires that matters. Directly contradicts with the current inside the wires creates a magnetic field outside the wires. Um, I think this is not what Derek actually means. I think that what he meant is that it's the initial current which forms a magnetic field which travel to the other side of the setup which generates another current. And it is that current which powers up the light bulb. I mean, you could say that both current and the magnetic field matters, but anyway, the bulb still turns on at t equals 1 over c seconds. Running the simulation, this is the voltage across the lamp. The voltage rises slowly and takes maybe over 15 milliseconds to settle close to the battery voltage. Change the inductance and capacitance value so that the line impedance matches half the lamp impedance. You see the lamp voltage would jump right away to half the supply voltage. So he meant that in his simulation, some of the setup, the bulb receives the voltage gradually and others, it receives half of the voltage right away. I mean, this setup is kind of already in a perfect physics world. If we could make the wire zero resistance, we might as well make its impedance half that of the light bulb so it can receive half of the voltage right away. Problem solved. If that's the case, what's the function of the switch here? If the bulb doesn't care about the shorts on either end, why does it care about the switch? Can't I simply move the open switch far enough away that it's out of the causal bubble? 
No, you can't, because, you see, after you close the switch, the current starts forming from the switch, not the batteries. So, if you were to put the switch really, really far away, then opening the switch will not generate current around the battery and the bulb, so the light bulb will not turn on. In fact, the radius of the current start generating is just the shape of the expansion of the causality sphere of the switch. What if I leave the switch out entirely and just have two parallel wires? If that works then does simply attaching two loose pieces of wire to a battery cause it to power every bulb in the universe? This is actually partly true because if you put two wires to a battery, there will be some current for a tiny short amount of time. In fact, the time is two times the length of the wire divided by the speed of light. Why? You see, initially the electrons start to flow and that would generate the current, but the current would eventually encounter air or other stuff which breaks the current back to the battery also at the speed of light. Thus, the current will exist for 2L divided by C seconds. I don't think my eyes are enough good for such a short duration of time. So I can just get rid of this bottom wire? Can I power literally anything this way with an open wire if it's long enough? Well, yes, if it is long enough, like you said. And I've mentioned this, the time the bulb will stay turned on is roughly 2L divided by C seconds. And if you use Derek's half-light second long wire, the bulb will actually stay on for roughly about one second. But in our real-life cases, any wire is too short, so the bulb will not turn on. And yeah, these are the problems solved. Now, there may be other flaws, but the major points are all solved. But at the end of the day, again, I'm not an expert in this field of area, so it's totally possible that I am all wrong about this. So feel free to comment down below any confusions or point that I didn't mention very well. And also, hit me on Twitter. You can direct message me, the link is in the description. Now, since I am a small channel, I am going to respond to every direct message, so go do that right now. Also, at the end, I want to say that this whole journey, just watching videos and researching about the topics has really strengthened my understanding about what electricity really is. So thank you Derek and other channels who had helped me along this journey. I have their channel links in the description. Go check out them if you can. And finally, if you like this video, consider subscribing and maybe drop a like. It meant a lot, especially to a small channel like me. So I would appreciate you. And yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good rest of the day.